Boy, that wood is as hard as an East Coast man's head. So it seems to me, if you're gonna go to the trouble to build a beautiful tool like this, that's hand forged with laminated steel, made by a blacksmith where the guy actually had to split the metal and put a piece of carbon in there to do everything right and the beautiful design and all the materials and to ship it off with a loose handle is shocking to me. I mean, it's shocking. If it's gonna be something that's sold at Harbor Freight or Walmart, okay, you know, we don't have super high expectations, right? But when you get in the $100 price range and something that obviously someone has cared because it is a beautiful thing to have a handle that uh, won't even stay uh, it's not even safe and then also not to send it uh, with a, a decent edge on it that was sharp and furthermore to spray the whole thing with lacquer varnish and cover it with stickers that won't peel off without uh, a ton of work um, that's a kind of a fail uh, in, in my, my book. I was originally ordered this because I wanted to show you how the attachment point was because I thought it was so fascinating but here we can see that it's not a good detachment point. So this as it's being called is a Japanese kindling hatchet in that classic bearded design. Isn't that beautiful? I think a bearded, bearded ax is one of the prettiest things. The reason for that shape is that it helps to get the weight closer down to the user's hand uh, to improve the balance. Uh, what I like to see on a bearded ax, like some of the um, northern style axes, is a comfortable handle up here, but now they have, but they have a square handle, so choking up on it to do detailed work is not really an option because this is uncomfortable on the hand but look at the beautiful lamination on that steel. If you see the two colors right there, they actually, it's a fascinating process. They actually take and, and split the metal. What they do is they use a, a softer metal that has less carbon in it that's more, um, uh, it's maybe a little bit tougher. Uh, it doesn't, not without edge, you know, it doesn't, it's not a tool steel, it doesn't hold a good edge. And then they mate that, they forge weld a piece of high carbon, super hard steel in there, and then they, they meet them together. And so you have a durable ax that can take a beating, and you have a high carbon cutting edge uh, that will hold, hold its edge uh, with heavy use. The fascinating thing about this, and the, why I, the reason why I or, ordered it, because I had never seen anyone try to attach a wood handle to a, a tool like this before. It's, uh, it is beautiful when you look at it. You can see right back there on the spine, you see that we've got a piece of flat bar that runs through the eye and has a little 90 degree turn on there. And it makes complete sense. They've driven that down in there and, and they've put two small brad nails in there to hold that. There's no way for this ax head to slip off the end because it's being retained by that metal clip. Also, it's gonna be a very easy ax to rehandle. Very quick, you can quickly put a handle on it being it's square, it's easy to fit. And then they, someone has driven a wedge in there uh, to try to tighten that up, but it's not tight. I mean, it's, you saw right there, the very first time I sunk it in wood, it was wiggly. It came this way. I've not chopped anything with it. So let's uh, do a little forensic. Let, let's see if we can t disassemble this, see what's going on, and figure out why it's doing that and how we can fix that. The first thing we need to do is to get these nails, brad nails out. So what went wrong here? And what is this little wedge supposed to be doing? That's not really a proper wedge. That's a piece of flat bar uh, that someone just cut off with a shear, just quick and dirty. Ah, now that's very interesting. So there's no shoulder, well, I mean, there's no taper on the shoulder to keep it um, fixed at both points, like in a, a, a Western style ax we've got a taper on there. So the further you drive the ha handle in, uh, the more it tightens on, not only on the top, but on the bottom as well. This is just kind of relying upon it to, to sit on or being tightened on the top and nothing supporting it really on the bottom. So here's the ax head. It is beautiful, isn't it? Look at that, pretty. So it is way, it, it, is got a, it has, does have a taper in there, you know, towards the front at the handle. And that fit now is it can only go one way, so you can't mix the handle up. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's taper that shoulder so that when it comes up hard against that, at least there's something holding that tight against the side and it's not just bouncing up and down on that ledge. 
we'll use the spoke shave and just put this the slightest taper on that. We don't want to take any of that wood away, but I, I don't want to feel any ledge there either so we can drive that down. Whatever wood they used, it's a hard wood for sure. You know, guys, I think the only way to fasten this securely is to put a wood wedge in it, but we're going to have to do it the opposite way. I've never done this before. I have to cut a kerf in here and wedge it out this way. My fear, the way the grain's oriented, is that that may split the wood. So one thing, so right there is where it was sitting before, right there on that shoulder, and we tapered this down. So we'll be able to drive that down a little bit further than that. So if we were to Let's say if we were to drill a small hole right here to relieve, it might help to relieve some pressure and then cut a kerf down there. That might just do the, do the trick. Now this may split when we wedge it, but then again, it may not. It depends on the type of wood it is, so we'll, we'll see. But even if it does, you know, what have we lost, right? We have to make a new handle for it anyway. All right, let's see what we can do here. So we don't want to forget our, our little keeper wedge. Now we've got that taper on there from that spoke shave. I think that's going to make a big difference here. We'll be able to drive that down there further. It's so unusual, I've just never seen anything like this before. But I've, a lot of the things are the same. You drive this down in there. Yeah, that's already, look how much further we're sticking up now. Now we're going down on that taper, that's going to be... It seems fairly obvious, right? That's really driving down on there. We might as well hit it again, get, get it as tight as we can. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm just wondering, would, it, would we be better off to use more of a uh, Western style of step wedge. This is so small, it's gonna split no matter what we do. This was already split. Um, I'm almost inclined to do this. Ah, we're, we're spitballing here, right? That's pretty tight. I'm using a brass hammer here, I'm trying not to ding that up because it, it is, I like the way it looks when it's got a sharp edge on it. The only thing remaining is to replace those brads. I don't, ha I ruined those nails getting out. I don't have any uh, steel ones, but I do have these lovely cop copper, little copper spikes. But the copper is so soft that it, uh, you have to pre-drill it because it will bend trying to set it in this hard wood. All right, friends, let's see how we did. We'll bury this in here hard. And we got rid of that movement. Let's give it a few good wax. Totally secure putting quite a bit of force on it. I don't, I don't see or feel any movement. All right, let's see how she splits. It carries, it's got a lot of nice weight to it. Boy, it's a, boy, it's a well-balanced ax, that's for sure. It feels, feels very natural in the hand. 
Oh, that's a hard old piece. It's a nice little axe. Feels great. Uh, that varnish doesn't feel great, but that's fixable. Still tight. Still tight. All right, so what did we learn here? Is it gonna is it gonna have a place here, a place of honor on the splitting stump here next to the <laughs> all my all my favorites here? Oh, we'll try it and see. We'll see how it holds up. Uh, it's a beautiful little axe. I saw that these were on sale for. I, I, I think they were at Wade Garrett. Maybe they're importing them. I bought mine on Amazon. It was about seventy-five bucks. I did see on their site that it was. They're selling it for sixty-five. Um, yeah, is it worth sixty-five dollars? Oh, I think so. I mean, it's really pretty. Uh, it, it definitely, it gave me the fizz when I first looked at it. Um, some of that, uh, of course, you know, went away when I get it and it's not really sharp. It's got a loose hax head on it. But I guess the takeaway from this and the thing that comes to mind is just the, um, oh, what a great sin uh, shoddy craftsmanship is and shoddy work. Not just this. And, you know, may, I don't have a, a whole bunch of them to test. You know, maybe I got, just happened to get a bad one, but I don't know if it's your experience, but it seems, seems to me that me getting bad ones of lots of different things seems to happen too often. I think, I think shoddy work is, is a great sin because it it's breaks the, the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. When you are, uh, let's say you're a, an excavator or you're a foundation guy and you do shoddy work or you pour a bad foundation on a house, as I've seen so many times, it affects everyone else. It makes everyone else's life harder. And that mentality of a guy that, that, makes, if, if, that makes that statement, oh, I don't really care, I can't see it for my house, or good enough for government work, that's a, that's a terrible thing to say, and that's a terrible attitude to have. And, and you never want to be that guy. You know, you're going to work with guys that are going to be like that. And they, they won't take care of themselves, they won't take care of their families most likely, they just don't take care of anything. They're just shoddy men and you don't want to be a shoddy man and you know you can't always do everything perfect i'm not saying that but i'm saying that you that you don't let something leave your hand that you wouldn't be proud of whatever that may be i don't care if you're writing code or if you're building houses or or your your whatever you're doing you want to do it to the best of your ability and that's what i like so much about the accountability that comes from the maker's mark you know, the maker's mark wasn't done out of pride back in the day. The maker's mark was done uh, as a, it was as a, an accountability. For example, I've seen loaves of bread that were made by bakers way back in the day, maybe me medieval times, where they had a little disc with their maker's mark on it that they would lay down and when they would proof the dough or, or cook the dough, that this maker's mark would emboss on the bottom of the bread. And therefore, you were accountable for it. If someone were to buy your loaf of bread and there was something wrong with it, maybe you wanted to save some money so you substitute half the flour with sawdust, there was recourse. They could flip that over and see, this came from such and such bakery and this is not right. And so, you know, there is that. Sometimes we need to be held accountable. <laughs> you know, a little bit more of that would be, you know, I'm speaking for myself as well, uh, would be favorable. But... Just, this is a perfect example of shoddy work. You know, it wasn't such a big deal. You know, it gave us an opportunity to, to kind of hang out and, and talk a little bit and, you know, you know, try to figure out a solution which has its own value. Um, but it's just not fair and it's not right for a guy to spend his hard-earned money on something and for it to show up like this and to not be ready to go and him have to take his own time, effort, material to make it right when it could have easily been made right had someone given the smallest amount of care or had the smallest amount of um, amount of, of pride of, of ownership, pride of craftsmanship. That's what I'm saying. So shoddy work is a great sin um, because it, it does break the golden rule. Uh, I, I think that there's a lot to that. So that's it.
Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I know a lot of you like to watch but haven't, I invite you to subscribe so you can stay informed what's going on. Um, take a moment and click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. And uh, don't forget, always keep us in your prayers and may God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go away and leave you all alone? I got a bad desire.